Lavin, none of this has been done in a foam pit. And he's a big dude too, so he's kind of robust and he's built for a crash. 44 is backing up two and three will put him into fifth place. So Cam White with a combined score of 88.32 is top five right now as we move on to Anthony Napolitan. Now, there's his situation. Two low scores. He's got to drop that second 40.38 and combine it with something absolutely stellar. Yeah, he's got to look at perfection right now. I mean, this is Anthony's kind of course. He loves all these rollers, these like finicky little jumps, the longer lows. And he's got some of the biggest tricks. But he's just been struggling a little bit. See, pulling up oh. short again. This is not the Napolitan that we've seen at the Dusor over the years. And that doesn't look like it's much fun either. Well, he's grabbing that right ankle as he came unseated. Remember, we talk about the transitions or the landings. They have to be nearly perfect on this course or you lose all speed momentum and you can't catch that next jump. So Napolitan being helped off the course. His day is done. Certainly not enough to get him onto the top three positions, but a strong run for him, a 41-2-5. There is your leader, Dennis Anderson. Can he stay there or will someone unseat Dennis Anderson? We'll find out when we return to the Portland Invitational. Back in the Rose City where the leader continues to be Dennis Anderson with a 91.12 with still a third and final run to go. Dosh sits in second as the defending champion, the overall Dew Cup winner, and Kyle Baldock, the Australian, lurking in third place. He also has his third and final run. We'll see that right now. The 20-year-old out of Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. Failed to qualify for the Dew Tour in 2010. Comes out in 2011, wins the first weekend in Ocean City. Now Kyle needs a 46.07 to take the lead away from Dennis Anderson. He definitely can do it. He's got some absolutely massive tricks. And is this the time to unleash the one that they've been talking about? Get ready, Portland. This is it. Oh, my oh, God. He does. He's done it again. Straight to front flip. Can he keep this dream run on course? Good Lord. That. That's I, how you win a contest. I know he's Australian. That's a commonwealth. But you might have to give him for queen and country on that one. He can have it because he's trying to take it all right here. He's trying to take the win from Dennis Anderson, the momentum from Brandon Dosh, and all the fans from Portland. He wants it all. A young man who has been dealing with some very difficult emotions as his younger brother died in a motorcycle accident in April, and he comes out and still has the composure, Jamie, to throw this down. Look at that. That is absolutely massive. He's going to clear the tent. He's that high. Wow, look, the first flip. The second flip, looking all the time for that landing. And that jump is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. That is a big, big jump. And that's a big trick. Estimation, how high was he there? Man, what, like 15 feet in the air? He was absolutely huge, massive. And then finishing with this, a double tail whip. Just a solid run. I mean, we've never seen riding like this. Look at this. The first backflip is kind of slow, and the second who really just pulls it in and around and then stomps that land into perfection. Amazing riding from that young Gold Coast ripper. Well, when TJ Lavin designed this course, I don't know if he had that in mind. Here's a young man who has just come to Portland and did nothing but business as he goes into first place. A 91-4-4. He has done it right, Jamie. He's improved his score every run. So he throws away the first run, and now he's stuck with two stellar runs in first place, 91-44. Wow, and that's definitely gave the other competitors something to really think about now as we come into the final runs. How would you like to be Chris Doyle? At 30 years of age, he has to follow up when Baldock just threw down and said, thanks a lot, Ozzy, appreciate that. You know what? It's tough for these guys. When kids that young come out, just blow the barn doors off the part, uh, off the dirt course. It's tough, but Doyle, he's no stranger to big guns, especially following them up. He's got some tricks of his own. Nice whip transfer there. Getting it started, missing that. Yep. Over the long and low, what do we got? Nice 360 invert there for Doyle. Not the run he wanted. You talk about missing it for the people watching at home when he goes up there and doesn't do a trick. Is it just the momentum wasn't there? He was off his line? He was just off his line. You know, you, like we said earlier, you've got to land perfect on every one of these jumps. And as we've seen TJ Ellis, 
Anthony Napolitan. If you're not on that line, you're not making right. the next jump. But Doyle, he was a little bit offline, but he still made it. But in this game, it's all about the tricks. Look, he got a little bit funky on that landing, stooped over the handlebars, and didn't have what it takes to make that trick happen over the next set. Another highlight, look at that shoulder buzzing action from Chris Doll as he sticks in that 360 invert. I'm sure there's a bunch of people on the East Coast Trail scene that are loving that trick right now. Well, he is nine months away from ankle surgery that he had at the end of November of last year, and All here right, he Jay, is Darryl. in the final. Honey, 89, Denise, I love you. 19 as he sends out best wishes to the family back in the Steel City of Pittsburgh. When we come back, Dennis Anderson, does he take back the lead or will it be the day belonging to Kyle Baldock? We will find out when the Portland Invitational rolls on live here on NBC. I just moved back to Tachapi to find myself get myself in that Rocky Balboa mindset, and do work. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is crazy. I'll keep you guys entertained this year for sure. There is Corey Nastasio. <laughs> Man, if I could watch anybody on this whole tour, it would be that guy. He's a true entertainer, and he's always up to something. You could always count on Nasty for getting you into trouble. AllySports.com is a site. Corey Nastasio is the entertainer. There's Kyle Baldock, and there is your there are your standings right now. The 91-44, which is four competitors to go. Remember, it's three runs. We only keep the two bats, and we combine them. And Dennis Anderson was the leader after two runs. Got bumped out by Baldock. Now, he's going to need a 45.64 to take the lead. His last run was a 45.81. So definitely, he is capable of that. Yeah, he's very capable. Here we go, folks. This is for the win today. Dennis Anderson, big flip win to get it started. Nice cannonball, Lake Superman. 360 and over that long and low. Opposite 360 bar spin is, and I say, is that enough? Pretty technical run. He did a lot of things that other guys weren't doing, especially in the rollers and the lead-up, but wasn't technical enough to impress the judges to give him that score. You know what? It was, but it wasn't as tight as the last, uh, the second run that he did. You know, it was good stuff. Big flip whip, the cannonball, the late Superman, the only guy 360 and over the long and low. You know what? I'm not a judge, and I don't want to be. That's why I like talking on TV, but look at that. Big flip whip, this, grabbing the seat. That's the cannonball. Putting the legs in the Superman, perfect. Coming over that long and low, look at that. He's the only guy doing it. It's so hard, there's no air time and you have to get that spin exactly right in order to hit this. Opposite spin, 360 with the bar spin in it. That's a tough trick to do. And look at this. 91.75, so Anderson goes into first place by way of a 45.94. And what's great about that, look at the camaraderie between the guy he's just bumped down into second place and Dennis Anderson. That's what BMX Dirt's all about. Everybody gets involved, everybody has a good time. And for these young kids, they're so stoked to be on this big stage with their heroes, the biggest riders in the world, and just laying it down and having a great time. Down to our final three competitors, TJ Ellis, two subpar runs for him, the standard he likes to do. But remember, this young man coming off a of full ACL meniscus surgery in February of this year. You know so what? This is the first big event for him. It is a big event for him. And everybody says that, you know, I'm not 100% this, you know, and that. Nobody comes to a do-tall 100%. Everybody has some kind of ailment. It wouldn't be a do-tall if it wasn't, and they wouldn't be an action sports athlete if they, if they weren't. But he's got a pull deep today. He's got to look into all the skills he gets down at the compound and make it happen. Look at that no-handed backflip. Straight to tie grab to no-hander. Ellis on the charge. Nice 360 yeah. double tail whip, but the feet went on the landing. And you know what, that's going to hurt, and it's yeah. more than the family jewels. Well, that's the TJ Ellis we thought we'd see in the first two runs. He's working out the kinks of being off the bike for a long period of time. Nice no-handed backflip there. Look at that. Here we go. Second hit. 
entire grab straight to no-hander. Original move, don't see too many guys doing that. TJ laying it down in the sunshine here in Portland. Over that long and low, catching that front wheel a little bit. Had to put a crank in just to keep the speed, but come back very strong. 360 double tail whip and just not making that landing, not getting those feet to the pedals. Well, it's his best run of the three, no question about that. We'll see what the judges give him. A 43.88, unfortunately, he has to hold on to the 41.44. So TJ Ellis will take a top 10 finish right now. All right, so we're down to the final two competitors. These guys Brandon. battled all the way to Vegas last year. This is Brett Banasewicz, just 16 years of age. And remember, the score to beat right now is a 91.75 put up by Dennis Anderson. So that means Banasewicz needs a 47.63. All right, kids, this has got to be video game time. He needs everything he's got, and it's not looking like it's happening, but a good save. What's he got? Cash roll over the last set. Wow. That was clean. That was clean, One but in off. the middle of the run, it did nearly fall to part. The cash roll, the signature move that he unveiled last year. Look at that single whip over that second set, landed one-footed, still gets his foot on, makes that roller, and then coming back with this. Please don't ask me how to describe this trick, because I don't even know how to get it started. It's like a front flip that goes into a back flip, that goes into a 360, that comes out roses. And here in Portland, that's all we need. And all the while, it's all corked out. He's all ski wampus, but he somehow manages to get the tires down first. So Banis Sandwich looking for something here in his third run. It's going to be a 44.50, puts him in a sixth place with an 88.63. Yeah. So Dennis definitely dodged the bullet with Banis which He's one of the big hitters, but Banis which really needed to just get back in the hunt. Yep. Our final competitor here in the dirt final is Brandon Dosh. He is the defending Duke Cup champion at 22 years of age out of Lake Orion, Michigan. Right now, it doesn't really matter what Brandon Dosh needs. What he does need is a very, very solid run. Ennison has had three amazing runs all day, but Dosh, he's got the skills to definitely pay the bills. Yeah, he'd like to drop that 45.06, and what he needs to take the lead and get the win, 46.19 would give him the victory. All right, Dosh saying this is it. It's coming with the fire here in Portland. Double tail whip transfer, straight to 360. Look back, are we going to see this trick over the last? Oh, 10 yes. oh. And Wow! Brandon Dosh went for it all. Jamie, I think if he puts that thing down, no question about it, he walks away with the win. You know what? You don't need to go to Las Vegas to gamble. You can do it right here in Portland on the Riverside. Dosh goes for that 1080 and coming up just a little bit short, but hats off to him for making it happen here today. Look at that all the time. He's spinning, looking for that landing, and he had it. Oh. He had it. He was about a foot away for maybe taking the win from Ennison. Look at it in the super slow-mo, just one little bunny hop on that back tire. He can smooth that out, and he Look is money. That. The upper part of the body is straight. He's opening up here on the 720, straightening up for that last 360, and then opening up again to get that landing. And that is so close to perfection. So Dennis Anderson, Brandon Dosh, Kyle Baldock putting on a fantastic show. But in the end, wow, Brandon Dosh. I, I love your comment. He went for it. He gambled, and he went for it, trying to progress the sport, but he comes up a little bit short. So that means that Dennis Anderson is your winner with a 91.75, the fourth BMX dirt victory for the 20-year-old from San Diego, California. Let's send it down to Tiffany. Dennis, the first dirt comp out of this year, and you get your fourth career win. You seem really dialed out there today. What was it? Uh, I like the jumps a lot. Like, everyone else kind of seemed like they weren't really feeling them, and I like how there's, like, the little, like, long and low and the rollers and stuff, because it's more trail style, and the other dudes aren't used to it, and uh, I'm psyched. A guy that had a huge part of that was TJ Lavin. He was able to be out here today. Anything you want to say to him? Uh, thanks, TJ, for making a course that actually, like, you couldn't just get over every jump real easy because it helped me a lot. <laughs> it did help you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Guys. So Dennis Anderson 